His name is Mario Baldessari. He's an economics professor now at La Sapienza University in Rome. As chairman of the Senate Finance Committee as well, he retains a key role in scrutinizing Italy's economy. Baldessari has also been at the heart of the country's political circle. He was deputy finance minister, remember, for five years during Silvio Berlusconi's second stint as prime minister. For most of that time, he served under present finance minister Giulio Tremonti. And I'm delighted to say that Mr. Baldessari joins me now from Rome. Thank you very much for coming on the show. Good to see you. So, I mean, a great deal of concern in recent days and weeks that Italy could now be uh, engulfed by the crisis is very much in the eye of the storm right now with everything that's been going on the mounting concern in the markets how important is it that this government acts boldly and swiftly to get this austerity package passed and those measures implemented well the European Union gave Italy some kind of homework which is balancing the budget within 2014 but didn't give any uh, advice how to reach that target which means that the easily can be understood that the target could be met either cutting government expenditure or raising taxes. And the way the government is chosen is, is, is raising taxes, which means that uh, uh, you know, the effects on the, on, on the gro growth rate will be negative. Uh, uh, the other point is that uh, uh, from this year to 2014, we have to start the adjustment, I do believe, immediately. And the point is that this kind of adjustment is only in 2014, while we leave 2012 and 2013 having deficit accruing government debt for other 120 billion euros. So the point is, it's, it's, uh, it's something that uh, the market will discover in the next few days. And the third point is that within the adjustment process to have to balance the budget in 2014, the government put two days ago uh, a measure for 20 billion euro, which has to come uh, by raising again taxes, but is due to a future law, which is the law or reform of the fiscal system, reducing deductions, which means hiring taxes. So tell me, Mr. Baldessari, is the aim of 48 billion euros, uh, is that a realistic target to meet by 2014? Is it possible? Well, arithmetically, yes, because uh, what we knew before this uh, decision was that in 2014 we would have a deficit of 46 billion euro. So if we raise taxes and cut a little bit government expenditure by more or less the same amount, ex ante and arithmetically, we meet the target. The point is, uh, 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 is a true tax rate uh, it's a true raise of taxes that can be performed over this year. And the second point is, why to wait until 2014? Why not to start the adjustment process immediately, mainly in 2012 and 2014? Uh, Mr. Baldessari, I mean, I'm curious about that because you're saying that uh, you're concerned about uh, this package, this budget having a negative impact on growth. Um, I mean, would that be an argument then to not start cutting until 2014? You're saying why should we leave 2012 and 2013 alone? I mean, maybe the, the economic situation is very fragile right now. Maybe if you started cutting too much too fast, it would be worse economically. Yeah, but the point is that there is some kind of mystery in the Italian economy and the Italian public finance. We have been cutting formally government expenditure for 20 years, but the, the key point of economic policy in Italy is that the cut on the government expenditure are referred to future expenditure, which means that if we did spend 100 euros this year and we forecast to spend 130 euros next year, we cut maybe 20 euros. So everybody debate about this cut of 20 euros, but nobody understand that when you have done this cut, really the government expenditure is increased from 100 euro to 110. And then what is going on in Italy over the last 20 years, and even in this decision 
that has been taken uh, yesterday. Okay, so Mr. Baldessari, with this in mind, I mean, I know that you're critical of this budget, but talk to me about longer term issues, you know, it, it, about the structural reforms that need to be implemented in Italy to boost long term competi competitiveness. I'm thinking uh, of, for example, the labor market. What needs to be done? What sort of reforms do we need to see in the labor market to boost productivity in Italy? Well, first of all, we have to cut down government expenditure, current account government expenditure, at least by 30, 40 billion euro. We can do it because it's a waste of expenditure. And it's also the gray areas between economics, politics, and some, in, some, in some cases even with criminal organization. Then we have to do the fiscal reform, reducing fiscal pressure, not increasing fiscal pressure. Then we have to do liberalization and privatization, which is, uh, you know, some kind of process that had been stopped since 10 years ago. And there are in Italy too many markets dominated by local corporations, by professional corporations, and there is also a problem with the young generation entering the market. Okay, when we look at the immediate problems facing the country right now, you know, we've seen borrowing costs rising quite dramatically to a point where, you know, many people are saying that it could become unsustainable. Do you think that uh, the country risks uh, being shut out of the market or do you think that actually uh, Italy is in a better position than, say, Greece, Ireland or Portugal because much of that debt is held by domestic institutions and as long as they remain willing buyers of Italian debt, things will be okay? No, the, the problem of Italy is not just the, the financial risk. There are no financial risks. Italy is able to pay back any kind of debt since it's a big economy, manufacturing economy, the point is growth. And actually, in the long run, if growth is not enough, then in the long run there could be problem on repaying the debt. And can I ask you, do you think that how difficult is it going to be to restore market confidence in Italy? I know that you're saying this isn't a long, the long term problem is growth, but if you look at the sort of short term volatility in the markets, there is a loss of confidence. How difficult is it going to be to restore that confidence with Prime Minister Silvio Berlusconi at the helm of this country? You know, the point is that in Italy there are 300, 400,000 people uh, having a very good life within this kind of uh, government expenditure waste. Uh, the problem is cut this kind of government expenditure waste and uh, give some kind of chance to the other 56 million people regularly paying taxes, uh, working every day. So it's a political decision. Uh, unfortunately, the strength of the 300, 400 people sometime or up to now have been much higher than the strength and the economic and political strength of the other 56 million people. So any kind of political party, any kind of government, any kind of majority have, have, have to take this kind of decision. How to put Italy again in a good growth path, uh, uh, having financial equilibrium. It's not only a problem of financial equilibrium that, you know, the Italian situation does not give any problem in terms of financial equilibrium prospect. But the point is how to raise growth to reinforce the financial equilibrium target.